Hey everyone, and welcome to Trend Micro's how-to series of videos. My name is Nicole Eby, and I'm a tech lead here with Trend Micro Tipping Point. Today we're going to talk about our inspection bypass feature, which is most commonly used to route user-configured traffic types through the IPS without inspection. Now you might have heard or used traffic management filters to trust traffic, so the first question I'm usually asked when I present this as an option is what's the difference? Inspection Bypass has a few notable qualities that make it a superior option for allowing traffic to pass, but it also has one notable drawback, which we'll visit shortly. Now, traffic management has more flexibility in what it can do with traffic, but those flows have to go deeper into the engine for the filters to make intelligent decisions. And what that means is that a box with either a heavy configuration, heavy traffic load, or even one under active attack of some kind may introduce some small amount of latency in processing, simply because it's performing a lot of simultaneous tasks. Inspection bypass, however, is processed at the switch instead of the engine, which means that latency on that traffic is virtually nil, regardless of the situation. But the best part about using inspection bypass is that the traffic bypassed using these filters doesn't count against the bandwidth license on the IPS or TPS device. And that's a great tool for cost management, as well as a temporary mitigation for oversubscribed devices while in the process of license or device upgrades. The only real limitation to this feature is that virtual platforms don't have it, and legacy platforms have limited capability when they do. The ones that do include the feature have a smaller number of inspection bypass rules available to them, 8 instead of 32. So you'll want to be deliberate about which rules you use. Which begs the question, what are some of the most important applications for inspection bypass? Well, from the field, our customers have told us that their go-to rules are typically for traffic that can't tolerate congestion. Things like voice over IP or connectivity traffic like BGP, BFD, or VRRP, or even network traffic that's not practical for inspection. And those could be things like internal trusted traffic, VPNs, or encrypted network traffic, which can't be inspected anyway because it's encrypted. To show you how some of these things are set up, let's do a quick demonstration. Today we'll be using an SMS and an 8400TX, both running 520 code. As far as configuration goes, inspection bypass differs from traffic management in that it's device-based, not profile-based. So you'll need to create these rules on each one of your IPS TPS devices that needs it. This also means that when those rules are created, they take effect immediately. No profile distribution is required. For our demo, that means that instead of going to Profiles in the SMS client, we'll click on Devices instead. Then we'll expand the device in question on the left and choose the Inspection Bypass section. From here, you just click New on the bottom right-hand side to bring up the Configuration menu. Here's where you name the rule now, and you'll want to be descriptive. We'll be creating an Encrypted Traffic Bypass rule today, so I'll just call it SSL Bypass. Clicking Next brings you to the action section, where, not surprisingly, Bypass is the first action listed as it's the most used. Clicking on this dropdown will show you all the things, though, and includes a few other options. You can block as well as bypass, as you can see, but the last three items are interesting in that they let you either move or duplicate traffic through different ports on the device. I'll run back through those in a minute, but let's finish what we started first. Click on Bypass and then Next to get to the meat and potatoes part of this wizard. Here, you determine exactly what kind of traffic you want to bypass. As I'm demonstrating a simple bypass of encrypted traffic, we'll leave IP as the Ethernet type as well as TCP for the protocol. Source and destination I'll also leave as any as we want to exclude all encrypted traffic. And we'll just change the port on both the source and destination to 443 using the value tag. Click Next when you're done. On this screen, you can designate VLAN tags that you'd like to exempt from inspection. You can use a single value or even a range if you like. But because we're only targeting a type of traffic and not a specific VLAN, we're going to leave this alone and just move on to the last step called Segments. Now, you don't have to apply inspection bypass to every segment on your IPS TPS device. Here, you can simply choose which ones it should apply to or leave Select All Segments checked and then click Finish. 
Notice that there's only one rule created here, which contrasts with the two or even four that are created when using traffic management rules. As I mentioned previously, TMFs can get much more granular with how traffic is treated, including not just the initiating connection, but also the destination's responses. But that comes with the price of it having to be processed by the inspection engine. Inspection bypass, however, automatically treats traffic from both the source and destination the same way. So there's only one rule required. What that also means is that you should tighten down your bypass rules as much as possible, as using large ciders for source or destination can open up rather large holes in your security posture. Now let's go back and take a look at those other options. We'll start a new rule. We'll call it redirect to 2B. And then go to action, where we can see the redirect as well as ingress and egress mirroring. Redirect is an option you can use when you essentially want to skip the entire inspection engine and send the traffic through unimpeded. But the difference is that it has the option of sending that traffic out whatever port you choose. Uh, mirrors simply copy all specified traffic and then send it out to another port similarly. If you choose mirror ingress, the redirected traffic will have just entered the switch and won't have been inspected yet. But if you choose mirror egress, the redirected traffic will already have been fully inspected. This can be really useful when taking packet captures for troubleshooting. If you simply mirror the ingress and egress port to a different segment, you can then capture what the traffic looks like both before and after inspection for further analysis. As the configuration for all three options is identical, we'll just work through this one for you. So let's choose redirect. The target port here is where you identify where you want the traffic sent. We're gonna select port 2B here and send that traffic on its merry way. You can select specific sources, destinations, ports, and protocols as well, though by and large redirects and mirrors are intended for all the traffic coming into the port. We'll configure the most common option by selecting IP protocol any. Same thing with VLANs, which we'll leave blank. The last screen again is segments, and it's important to note that this is the source traffic that you intend to redirect or mirror. The big caveat here is that you can technically leave select all segments checked. This is a no-no, because not only would all of that traffic overload any port you selected as the target, but because the selection includes the target port itself. You'll want to utilize a one-to-one -one port pairing here. And because different modules can have different port speeds, be sure that the source port of your data doesn't have a higher line speed than your target. We'll just choose port 1A here and click Finish, where you'll see the final rule created on your screen. If you're curious about how much traffic is actually being passed using these rules, you can check the statistics column here, which shows an incrementing number of packets over time. You can also refresh and clear those statistics using the buttons on the lower right-hand side. And that wraps up our how-to for inspection bypass. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our Tipping Point Technical Assistance Center. And thanks so much for watching.